Hey, what's up? Today, I want to discuss cognitive dissonance. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, but I just keep forgetting. Um, yeah, it's pretty important. Cognitive dissonance, uh, very sweet topic. It's kind of, um, it's psychology, but it has a lot to do with spirituality, I think. And um, until we learn about like psychology, it's gonna, you know, hinder any spiritual growth. So um, this is just a reminder for me and some info for people maybe who don't know and uh, friends and family, of course. So yeah, anyway, um, cognitive dissonance is basically a discomfort and mental stress you feel when your ideals or values have been challenged um, and they don't match reality you know you know they address their beliefs to match what's happening in their lives um, you know say say for instance you have someone who like does not like you know um, Miley Cyrus or the way she dresses or something like that and then their daughter starts dressing like that or something and then they're kind of like well you know she can do that because she pays her own mom's bills and she you know buys this and that and she does this and that so she can do that and when they really don't spiritually feel that way um, you know that can have an effect on the mind where people uh, start to be really defensive and blame other people for um, for them you know for their cognitive dissonance which is really interesting um, <laughs> so pretty much cognitive dissonance is like the root of fear um, we become angry when our worldviews are challenged so pretty much you know if I call you out on something then you're going to be getting upset about it oh I didn't do that or I wouldn't do that or you know maybe making it an excuse <laughs> uh, well I mean everybody does it so it's like anyway um, when you feel stressed or overwhelmed you feel a disequilibrium that is cognitive dissonance cognitive dissonance do I have a chair for it because there's so many people who have it who dwell in it on a daily basis and it's quite hilarious cognitive dissonance go cognitive dissonance anyway <laughs> um, you know, and a lot of times this kind of thing happens, the brain's like pros trying to process all this information and then instead of like processing it, it just goes straight into the cognitive dissonance, which is either excuse, blame, justify, you know, um, denial. Those are the three. Um, justify, deny, blame, you know, and massive, um, Oh, shoot. <laughs> so anyway, this theory was created by Leon Festinger um, in 1959 and James Carl Smith, you know? So it's really important to be aware of these kinds of things. Um, cognitive dissonance pushes you out of your comfort zone. When you're pushed, you have two paths you can take. Um, you change your beliefs, attitudes, and actions. So it's like, oh, okay, so now I found out that they do all this horrible stuff to animals and whatever. So, you know, I want to become an animal activist. So I'm going to, you know, help the animals or whatever and you know refrain from eating them and treat them fairly and all that other good stuff um 
and it leads to spiritual growth. And then, you know, you have resisting, which leads to justifying, denying, and blaming. All again, oh, and defensiveness. All again, A1 um, <laughs> cognitive dissonance signs. So, um, with that being said, every time you feel yourself justifying, denying, blaming, or being de getting you know extremely defensive stop breathe take a deep breath be in the moment even if you're in hell in your mind and um be aware of info and like learn and try to be kind to everyone um even though it's really hard sometimes. I know people have their issues they're dealing with, drama, social issues, you know, but um, at the end of the day, we're all still human and we all have to come together and live on this planet as one. So might as well like get over your hangups and <laughs> make it work, you know, regardless. Um, so anyway, Till Swan is kind of someone who inspires me to um, learn more about spirituality and not everything I agree with her on. Some things I do, some th a lot of things I don't. Um, I actually want to address a comment that was posted, um, you know, on... Um, Greta Asara. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, um, but I'm gonna put everyone's I'm talking about videos in the link below, and um, her video. Well, anyway, someone commented, and it was a really weird comment. And um, what's her name? Mean Queen Joe. I won't forget that name. Mean Queen Joe. Hi. Uh, she said, you know, talking about racism and how you know. Um, racism in America um, against African people was not that brutal compared to the enslavement and you know brutal killings um, between the Spanish and the Native Americans um, and she also said that you know <clears throat> in Africa some really think horrible things happen to women torture rape kidnapping as in Nigeria recently or whatever and she mentioned these things and I just wanted to tell her first of all those influences and I learned this from a really good friend who happens to be from Africa Hemp Ali check him out on Facebook thank you um, he was actually one of the great friends that inspired me to learn more about our history and um, just the African culture in general, which I now come to um, love and cherish and honor, you know. Anyway, so <clears throat> back to subject. Um, <clears throat> well, he told me that a lot of those influences, most of those influences, all of those influences are Islamic influences, which is religious, which if you do notice the Islamic religion, it is um, not 